five years ago, when I was in middle school, I lost one of my friends. The ostensible cause was mental illness but in reality it was because he was possessed by some guys. For me, it's one of those memories I'd rather forget. I had a chance to talk to an old friend the other day, and I remembered that time vividly. I think that by writing it down here, I can be a little more objective and forget my fear, so here goes. We, a B, C, D, and I, were all supposed to take over the family business, so we had a lot of free time on our hands. The school also thought it would be a good idea for us to skip school so that we would not interfere with the entrance examination group. After the gymnastic festival, as long as we showed up at school in the morning, we could leave the rest of the day and seldom got angry with them. One day, my friends A and B asked me about a neighbor's mansion. They said that the house had just been renovated, but the owner committed suicide by hanging himself, the family was separated, and the house was vacant. We were having a hard time finding a place to hang out after skipping school, and we thought we could drink and smoke as much as we wanted there. So the next day we left school at noon. It was a very nice house that we could not see from the outside, and we were a little scared to enter such a place. However, A and B kept saying, it's okay, and kept going inside. I wondered if they had already checked the house and found the kitchen door open. We went into what looked like a study, kept our faces out of the windows, and began to sneak around and have a drink. But since we couldn't speak loudly, we soon got bored and the five of us started searching for the house. Soon C said, what is that, and noticed the top of the wall in the room we were in. At the top of the wall were two small windows that looked like a school music room or gymnasium broadcast room. This one's a room, too. I looked closer and saw that there was a door on this side of the wall, and the door was blocked from this side by a bookcase. When I shouldered over, the window on the upper left side was opened by hand. Now that I think about it, I should have questioned then that there was a slight stench coming from that window. Still, I could not overcome my desire to sneak a drink and forced myself to enter the room through the window. The room was filled with moldy dust and a rotten smell. The room was damp, as if it had been leaking rain. The room was not what one would call a music room. I could tell that there was some kind of handmade soundproofing material on the walls and wallpaper over it. The wallpaper was crusty from moisture. The room was plainly furnished, but there was a small desk in the corner. On top of it there was a blacked-out photo in a large frame photo case. When my friend A lifted up the photo case, a piece of paper fell out of the back of the frame. A sheet of paper fell from the back of his forehead, and a bundle of hair came out from it. The paper was a money bill. Everyone thought it was bad and couldn't speak. Seeing A's pale face B said he would hurry to get out of the room. When B climbed up to the window to escape, all the wallpaper on that side of the room came off in a flash. The same gofudu that came out from behind the picture was stuck all over the wall. What the hell is this? C, who was weak on alcohol, almost vomited on the spot. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Hurry up. D and I pushed hard on B's buttocks. I didn't know what was going on. Behind us, someone was shouting, e -e 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 It must have been A. I was possessed. I was too scared to look back. I climbed up and jumped down to the room on the other side of the room. D also came out and tried to pull the blunt C out of the room side, Ida Ida. Don't pull my leg. C shouted. Across the room, voice that sounded like A was moaning with a strange sound. I heard C's foot kicking against the wall. B, bring the priest. D shouted backward. 
Something is possessing A. Go to the back and bring the priest from the shrine. B dashed barefoot from the porch, and we pulled C from the window. Feet. Leg. Does it hurt? No, it doesn't hurt, but I got bit. When I looked, I saw that the heel of C's sock had teeth marks and was wet with saliva. As if something had been the whole heel of the sock. A's voice was still coming from inside, but we were too scared to look in through the window. I wonder if he's going to haunt me. What do you mean, haunted? A is still alive. He kicked me so hard when he came out. Hey! The Shinto priest wearing a sweatshirt came in from the porch with a pale face. What are you guys? What are you doing? Idiots! B, who had come in with him, already had tears and a runny nose on his face. He said, yeah, you guys go home. Get out of here, go into the shrine office from the back, and have Yuri-san take a look at you. And hey, he suddenly grabbed me and twisted me up behind his back. I heard a cracking sound behind me. Go on. He pushed me back and we ran, unsure of what was going on. Then we went up the mountain behind us to the shrine office where a small middle-aged lady was waiting for us dressed in white. I think she was extremely angry with me, but I don't remember much after that due to the sense of relief I felt when I escaped. After that, I stopped coming to school. My parents were called by the shrine several times but they never gave me any details. They just told us never to go behind the mountain. Since we had been through such a horrible experience, there was no way we were going to go to the mountain. And we spent our time in the school being small. The day the final exam was over, the life guidance teacher called us in. I went to the guidance counselor's office, expecting to get a big kick in the pants for all the work I had done so far. I went to the guidance counselor's office and found B and D sitting there with me. The priest was also there. There was no life guidance teacher there. As soon as I came in, the priest said to me, Oh my God, C is dead. I could not believe it. I knew then that C had not come to school yesterday. He skipped school and came to check on A, who was bundled up over here. I would have known he was in danger if I hadn't been visiting him in the hospital. The moment he peeked into the tatami room through the back grate, he let out a terrible scream and collapsed. When I ran to him, his eyes were wide open and he was gasping for breath. I thought, how can you talk like that when C is dead? But the priest looked at us with serious eyes. He looked at us with serious eyes and said, Well, A is gone and you must forget about C from now on. He is blind, so he won't come to haunt someone who doesn't know him. If anyone remembers him, he will come to him no matter how many years it takes. If he comes, he will be possessed and die. And don't let your hair stand on end. If you see it and run away, it will pull your hair first. After hearing this, we left the study room with heavy hearts. At that moment, the goddess used scissors to cut off the hair in the back of my head. I thought it was just some kind of spell, but it was more than a spell. I went to a barber shop on my way home and had my hair shaved. From that moment on, I had to give up the idea of taking over the family business after graduation. After that, we went to different prefectures to pursue our careers. We had to decide to never see each other, and if we did see each other, we had to pretend to be strangers. I was able to enter a high school in a neighboring prefecture a year later. And I forgot about the past and immersed myself in my own life. I cut my hair short. But every time I asked for a monk at the barber shop, I remembered the story of the priest. Three long years passed, wondering if he would come today or tomorrow. 
After that, I rode in further and was able to enter a university in another prefecture. However, it was a bad idea for me to go back home for the Bond Festival. I had always been a grandfatherly child, and my grandfather had passed away on New Year's Day that year. It was sudden, but my parents had said over the phone, Why don't you at least come home for the first open? That was a bad idea. I stopped at a station kiosk to buy a newspaper, and my girlfriend from junior high school was the vendor. When she saw me, she burst into tears and started to talk about the deaths of B and D, respectively. She told me that shortly after graduation, B locked himself in his room at the boarding house and hanged himself. The room was closed with shutters and curtains, and all the doors in the room were sealed. He had also methodically attached each strand of his own hair to the top of the door. He had wax marks on his ears and eyelids where he had tried to seal them, but he committed suicide without doing so until the end. I heard that Dee fled to Shikoku in the summer of 17. In a town near Matsuyama, they found him walking around in just his underpants, laughing like a camel. The hair on the back of Dee's head was falling out as if a crow had plucked it. Dee's eyelids were not closed but had marks where he had tried to cut them out himself with a knife so that they would never close. I have never cursed a middle school relationship as much as I did at that time. It didn't matter to me now what happened to B and D. In other words, I realized that I was the only one left who remembered that thing. I arrived home with a strong tightening sensation in my chest and found no one at home. I later learned that in my region, the bereavement ceremony is held every year. I later learned that in my region, there was a custom called bereavement rounds, in which the first open was held at a temple in Nara. Even for the head family, if the family had a particularly strong bereavement, I was brought there. For the next three days, I had to stay in bed at my parents' house with a fever of over 39 degrees Celsius. I thought I was going to die. I laid out a futon in the Buddhist room, put on white clothes, and slept drinking water. At dawn on the third day, he stood up in my dream. He was skin and bones blackened and white-eyed. You're alone, aren't you? Yes. Will you come over here, too? No. C wants to see you. No. If you don't come, C will be lynched every day. He'll be hung upside down with a sock in his mouth and kicked to the curb. Bullshit. Hell can't be that lenient. Ha ha ha. Hell. Hell is sweet. Then I woke up. My throat was making a hissing sound with the sound of my own breath. I looked at my grandfather's tablets and saw that they were cracked. I thought about it. If I told the story of that thing to as many people as I did, it would find me and the probability of my being possessed would decrease. I am very sorry for the length of this article. I didn't want to write in such a general way that it would not be memorable to those who read it. I am sorry if you have read it, but please think of it as a dog bite. If you want to improve your own chances of survival, I recommend that you expose this text to as many people as possible.